Welcome back to the channel where I go and actually review brand new movies exclusive to streaming services. Today, I'm going to go ahead and actually look at the comedy Wicked Little Letters on Netflix. Now, for main target audience members, when I say targeted, I'm thinking about people that go ahead and actually like dark and dry wit humor, female led ensemble cast, and crime comedies. If you're a part of that demographic, I'm going to go ahead and actually say you definitely want to watch this as soon as possible. For casual viewers, I'm going to go ahead and actually suggest you add this to the playlist. And now, go ahead and actually stay tuned, and I'll give you the reasons why I gave it those recommendations. And Rose may find some kindred spirits in prison. No, no, not the murderers or the rapists. I'm thinking more the drunks and the queers, maybe. Just trying to find a bright side. Wicked Little Letters is a period comedy movie that premiered in July of 2024 on Netflix. It has a really efficient runtime of an hour and 40 minutes. And it stars Jesse Buckle as Rose Gooding, Olivia Coleman as Either Swan, and Timothy Spall as Edward Swan. IMDb has a synopsis like this. A 1920s English seaside town bears witness to a dark, absurd scandal in this riotous mystery comedy. Based on a stranger than fiction true story, Wicked Little Letters follows two neighbors, deeply religious local Edith Swan and rowdy Irish immigrant Rose Gooding. When Edith and fellow residents start to receive wicked letters full of unintentionally hilarious profanities, foul mouth Rose is charged with a crime. The anonymous letters prompt a national uproar and a trial ensues. However, as the town's women, led by police officer Gladys Moss, begin to investigate the crimes themselves, they suspect that something is amiss and Rose might not be the culprit at all. So that's what we actually have for the story. And when you go ahead and actually look at this, the story is based on a real investigation from 1920s Britain. And when you watch the trailer, it kind of makes me remember back to the letters of Circleville, Ohio. I don't know if you know about that mystery, but that's what automatically came to my mind. And then obviously being set in Britain in the 1920s is a little weird. Uh, so it's really kind of hard to give context to a story like this as to like what I expect, but that's the kind of thing I'm looking at as like a conspiracy theory, but in a comedy setting, dry Britain, uh, that type of deal in there so it's a very unique setting unique type of movie to bring about now being a being a true story is intriguing but the subject matter really does not intrigue me as much so i'm gonna go ahead and actually put myself as a casual for this one and the reason why i want you to always go ahead and actually know what my perspective is is because you should always know what perspective your reviewer has when they go ahead and actually get a recommendation i watch movies that are exclusive to the streaming content to see if they're worth your time i watch so you don't have to if you like how that sounds do me a favor click like share subscribe and now let me dive into the review after watching this movie i do feel that it is very much like those circleville letters that whole conspiracy on there but set kind of like in that Downton Abbey or Mr. Bean-esque type of feel. Yes, my UK references are ridiculously dated, probably horrible, ridiculous, but what are you going to go ahead and actually get from somebody from the States, right? So, but that's my perspective. So when you go ahead and actually look at all that, you have everything in there. Let's talk about the storyteller. Storyteller, I'm going to tell you up front, it's a B plus for me. Now, the movie starts slow, which is kind of you know, it's one of those snooze fests on there for like the first 10, 15 minutes. You got to get through that. They're setting up things. They're trying to go ahead and actually set the scene, the settings, uh, the characters and what have you. But they're kind of slow getting to it. It's not a whole lot funny or anything like that. So that kind of drags off for a bit. Once you get past that and you go ahead and actually see that they uh, are setting up your characters and they're setting up the personalities, they really start to charm you. The biggest thing to understand about this movie is that it highlights or shows the lowlights of 20s Britain viewpoint from a women's perspective, meaning that we're looking at a patriarchy society that was still there and how women were demeaned or they were unequal to their male counterparts back then. And that really is shown prevalently through this particular film. When we're setting up the first entire act of the environment, whatever, you really get that feel. And we're exposed to like the main characters who are women who live in like this middle to lower uh, class small town of Little Hampton. And we see that they're struggling to kind of matter in this patriarchal society and trying to just you know get by and live whether they have a husband or not uh if they're doesn't matter if you're an authority figure or not if you're religious or not like everybody's just trying to make their way and it's told through these women's eyes sometimes a little boisterously exaggerated style but 
these are based and steeped in historical facts, what have you. So we look at that, we see the setups, and we kind of identify our main characters who are mostly women and kind of look at it from their perspective. The second act of the film really focuses in on the letters and it shows you how what's their impact towards the public and then what the police do with them in their investigation trying to find the culprit because these are salacious letters. They're going ahead and actually, you know, cussing, using forbidden words and all that kind of jazz. So there's really a lot of people going to get on this and you kind of see how it how the main characters deal with this. There's just enough story here to kind of flip between the investigation and the individual's lives so that you don't get too bored or too bogged down in some of the details, which is very good because the story, if you really go and actually think about it, is there's not a whole lot of meat on this bone, but they have just enough on there in character development that you like switching between the investigation and the real life lives of, of these characters so that you can go and actually really figure out who you like, who you don't like, what's going on, all that kind of good stuff. The shocking thing in second act is that they go ahead and actually tell you rather early who is the center of the letters well, they're not gonna, not gonna reveal them not gonna spoil anything but they kind of tell you that but it doesn't destroy the story it actually kind of enhances it a little bit and takes it further for for the story to advance or what have you but the the mystery aspect of things kind of taken away for you really quick so if you're a mystery fan and you want to figure it out on your own you may figure it out anyways but it's going to be one of those types of things that they're not going to leave you in suspense too much on this one they're concentrating on the stories and the impact that the story has with the characters here in the third act, things wrap up really nicely for the characters, especially the main characters of Rose and Edith as the mains. Um, this one actually really signs a light on the investigation for the police through the lens of woman police officer Gladys Moss. And I say it like that because they say that in the film often. It's hilarious. You know, woman police officer Gladys Moss. She's clearly a woman. She makes that point often, but says it in there. It's just so weird. Um, but there was a satisfying resolution that happens with this movie in I like that because it tidies things up. There's a lot of movies that are being made now that kind of are ambiguous or they um, ended weird or anything like that. But this, um, and maybe it's because it's based off of a real case or what have you, but they give you a definitive ending. And I like that. That was really good. So the storytelling for me was solid. B plus really like the story. As for the acting of this, I'm going to go and actually say A minus. I think everybody in this movie did a great job. From Jesse Buckley's portrayal of the loud, boisterous Rose and dealing with that and her being like a single mom and all this kind of stuff in there, she was fun. Uh, Olivia Coleman as the quiet, proper Edith Swan, she was very good in her role of just kind of being prim and proper and trying to go and actually make it in that society, what have you. Both of them were really great in their roles. But as I always feel by comedies, is that comedies are really made or broken by supporting cast. If you get some supporting cast members that really accentuate the the mains and kind of take some of that pressure off so that they don't have to do all that heavy lifted, that's where you go from like a decent comedy to a very good comedy or a great comedy. This cast had that. There's a lot of good supporting cast members. Um, like Ajana Vassan as Gladys Moss was great. Uh, Timothy Spall as Edith's father, Edward, really made you dislike him. And you understood why because of the setting and the time and all that kind of stuff. But man, they were just, you were giving it to him like, man, dude, chill. You know, that type of thing. And that's some great acting on there. For me, there was also a special shout out to uh, Joanna Scanlon as Anne because she steals every scene that she is. And um, her, her character is just, she's probably the second favorite character behind Rose. Maybe also behind uh, Gladys Moss, but... Anne's character is just ridiculous and she, she cracked me up on there. So loved it. The acting was top notch. It's just not easy to go and actually do it in a crime comedy, um, especially with British humor, dry, witty and all that kind of stuff in there. But they nailed it here. A minus for the acting. My kind of last thoughts on this particular movie is the reason why I say uh, for target audience members to watch it right away is that Netflix really goes in and actually is big on people watching within the first 30 days or 60 days on there to go ahead and actually see if that's uh, their downloads to see who's actually watching this to see if they're going to go and actually continue to have films and content like that. So I encourage you to watch this as soon as possible if you're a target audience member because the humor in both dry and witty conversations, the delivery is on point. Uh, the events are easy to follow, but with the crime aspect of it and the tools of the time, you do kind of get in that investigation and they're trying to find out who it is and all that kind of stuff. That was kind of fun. Every character is given some time to shine and the comedy is well done, but it's not over the top. And for target audience members, I really want you to go and actually let Netflix know that this is your thing. For casual viewers, I bring down the expectation that you don't have to watch it you know, right away, but put it on that playlist and pull up that playlist every now and again when you're thinking about like, hey, you know, what's there to watch or whatever? Oh yeah, this is a good comedy to go ahead and actually watch and it's worth your time. If this is one that you would add to your playlist for a movie night, 
and figure it out because you have an efficient uh, storytelling that makes it a quick watch, really fun. The production of acting is great. And if you really want something that's a period driven um, and stars a largely women cast, and it's going to go and actually make you smile and chuckle through it. This is it. It's nothing, anything groundbreaking or anything like that. But a casual viewer is going to go in and actually get some worth out of this because when you turn it off, you will have smile. You had a good time on there. Uh, get a little bit more insight into that period in time and things like that in Britain. And it's just a fun ride. So that's what I have for Wicked Little Letters on Netflix. Check it out. I notice they say foxy ass a lot. Nobody swears like that. What would you say? You look like Queen Victoria Shunt. <gasps> you daft old <sighs> You stay for this entire time. I appreciate you. Do me a favor. Click like, share, subscribe. Or if you want to, you can watch one of these other videos that YouTube really thinks that you might like of mine. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.